Okay, this is part two of two on the biological macromolecules and enzymes lecture. We're going to continue on with the fourth and final type of biological micromolecule, and that is nucleic acids. And nucleic acids don't just function in heredity, but they are also types of energy molecules, and we'll talk about that shortly. The monomer unit for a nucleic acid is called a nucleotide, and the polymers include DNA, RNA, and ATP. There are five nitrogenous bases for nucleic acids. Adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine are all found in DNA, and adenine, guanine, cytosine, and uracil are found in RNA. So the only two that are different is the RNA, or the uracil and the thymine, depending on what you're talking about. Now you do need to know the different nucleotide structures, but this is the primary one that I'm going to ask you to remember. It's got a phosphate group attached to a 5-carbon sugar, which is either ribose or deoxyribose, and a nitrogenous base that has either one or two rings, depending on whether it's a purine or a pyrimidine. And no, you don't need to know purine and pyrimidine, so don't freak out on that one. The most common nucleic acid that everybody's familiar with is DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid. The only differences between DNA and RNA is DNA is a double helix, RNA is a single, um, DNA has thymine, RNA has uracil, and the sugars, that five carbon sugar, one has um, ribose and one has deoxyribose. And other than that, they're almost identical. The other type of nucleic acid, poly, or poly, polymer, sorry, is ATP, which is adenosine triphosphate. This is the energy money in the cell, and this one is one that you pay attention to because um, it functions in photosynthesis, cellular respiration, muscle contraction, uh, nerve conduction, all sorts of different things. Anything that requires energy in the body uses ATP. Anything that uses energy in a any kind of cell uses ATP. So this is a, a fundamental underpinning in the me metabolic processes of all life on Earth, and it is a type of nucleic acid. Now ATP looks a little bit different because it only has one nucleic acid, nitrogenous base, the adenine, and then it has a ribose just like RNA does, and then it's got those three phosphate groups instead of just one. And so the difference between ATP and uh, RNA is pretty clear from that one. Okay, so that's it for the biological macromolecules, and now I'm going to talk about one specific function, which is enzymes. Enzymes are types of proteins, and all enzymes end with the suffix ASE, ACE, or almost all of them, I should say. These are special proteins that are involved in chemical reactions. These ki kinds of proteins are called catalysts. Catalysts means that they speed up chemical reactions without getting used up themselves. Enzymes are extremely specific because only certain enzymes can catalyze only certain chemical reactions. Enzymes work by binding to reactants called substrates at a place on the enzyme called the active site. Enzymes operate at an ideal temperature and pH. Higher or lower temperatures, or pHs, will destroy the enzyme molecule. The destruction of the enzyme molecule, or, or the changing of the enzyme molecule, or any kind of protein, is referred to as denaturing it. And if you change the shape of the enzyme, you change the shape of the active site. If you change the shape of the active site, you've inactivated that enzyme. It don't, no longer works. But enzymes do work by reducing the activation energy required. Now, activation energy is the certain amount of energy you have to put into a reaction to get it to go. Um, so basically, what it does is it brings the reactants closer together or weakens the substrates to allow them to join more easily. Those, those are the two kinds of ways enzymes really work. Simple cells can have as many as 2,000 different enzymes. Um, multicellular uh, critters have lots more enzymes than just that. An enzyme can make a chemical reaction 10 trillion times faster. A reaction that would take 1500 years by chance 
if it happened at random, would take about five seconds with enzymes working. Now enzymes have specific steps and basically you'll see that um, the substrates are going to join in to the active site and then they bind with the enzyme and each other called the enzyme substrate complex. And this is the point, if you look back on this um, chart, that top of the hill, that tipping point where it can go either forward or backwards, that is where it's most tightly bonded and that is where it's at the enzyme substrate complex. And then it kicks out the substrates um, as products because it's done something to them. And, and in this case, it's made pyruvate, um, it's taken a phosphate off of a pyruvate and made it into ATP. Okay, and so then it kicks out the products and the enzyme is ready to go. And if you look at the shape of the enzyme, it has not been changed in any way. When you do change the shape, you denature it. And here's some examples. A liquid egg, you know, it's liquid in the eggshell. When you cook it, you've added heat. And when you add heat, it changes the protein structures and causes them to cross-link and become a solid. That's denaturing the proteins. Similarly, if you change the pH of an enzyme, it can inactivate it by denaturing it. If you take a look at pepsin and trypsin, pepsin is a protein um, enzyme. It, it helps to metabolize proteins and it only works in the stomach. So it works at a pH of two. That's its optimal pH. Um, trypsin helps to digest fats. And so trypsin and proteins and trypsin only works in the small intestine, which has a pH of eight. So you can see that the two don't work in the other environment. So once the pepsin comes out with the stomach acids, it gets inactivated in the small intestine. Similarly, if you take a look at the bacteria that's heat tolerant, its optimal pH is almost twice that of human body temperature. So you can see here that it's really um, got a completely different temperature regime than our normal human enzymes do because they work at optimal body temperature, which is 37 degrees Celsius. Okie dokie, that concludes enzyme dynamics. You need to be able to understand kind of how enzymes work. Um, we will look at labs on that material and hopefully if you have any questions, see me during office hours and I'll be happy to help you. Have a good day.